the uh, listeners of the I Radio for this opportunity. Uh, actually, this is the first ever South Sudan investment policy. Uh, and it is one of my dreams, actually, that I must have to make a policy on investment for this country. It's one of critical issues that actually attract the investors. Because the first question that every investor asks is, do you have policy? And it becomes embarrassing for us to say that, no, we don't have policy. As we are formulating it now, I believe that we are going to have a lot of opportunities. The policy is centered around almost eight areas, chapters. The first chapter is introduction, normally about South Sudan and how it is rich in terms of natural resources. We try to project the opportunities of our country. What do we have? The realities about the South Sudan, which uh, many people know. Uh, in the second chapter, we talk of situation analysis. Basically, uh, the current situation of investment in South Sudan, and we touch a lot of challenges which are facing our country. Uh, we touch also the legal uh, framework of the investment in our country. So it was about analyzing uh, the challenges and try uh, to seek the answers to those uh, uh, challenges. Chapter 3 is about priorities sector. We try to articulate which is supposed to be priority in South Sudan. We talk of many areas. We place agriculture actually as the the best priority in this country and we must have to mobilize investors to come and, and invest in the agriculture. Plus other priorities like mining, like tourism, the uh, service sectors, these are priorities and we talk about it in lengthy in the, in the policy. Then now, in Chapter 4, we talk about the policy framework, especially the principle. What are the principles of the investment policy? We identified 11 of them, uh, about 11 principles. Uh, chapter 5, we identified the fillers, also around 10 fillers, which actually we want to uh, concentrate including mobilizing the domestic uh, investors and, and South Sudanese diaphragm because these are very important category and we must have to uh, mobilize them. Uh, chapter 6, we uh, make it as a monitoring and evaluation because policy need to be monitored and then evaluate each time, especially after two or three years we are going to evaluate the policy. Chapter uh, 7 is about risk management. Risk management is really very important uh, because we are doing investment uh, we, and we are expecting that there are going to be risk and we must have to uh, prepare on how we should do that. Uh, plus two attachment to the, to the policy, that is the implementation framework. Uh, we are targeting five years plan, that is uh, 2025 and 2030. Uh, upon which we believe that the uh, targets which we identified in the policy are met, especially the employment of our young people, and we are targeting a certain percentage, the enhancements of the value of South Sudanese pound, and also we are targeting a certain percentage. Uh, so uh, this is uh, briefly about the structures of the of the policy
All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister, for giving us a big background about this uh, the new policy. So I would like to ask you, you say that this plan is for five years. How does this policy aim to attract uh, foreign investors and what sectors are your targets for investment? Uh, the Actually, the policy uh, is not uh, for five years as such, but we struck within the policy a strategic plan of the five years mm -hmm. where we are targeting a certain uh, targets. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. And this, it cannot happen if we uh, do not mobilize the investors. Because the whole assumption is that the situation will be improved in our country, whether politically or in, in security-wise, or in terms of infrastructure. We assume that all these, they are going to be improved. Especially, the policy will help to improve the situation. You know, the, the policy itself is not a policy of the Minister of Investment. It's a policy of the government of South Sudan, yeah. where many sectors are supposed to play the role mm -hmm. in implementation of this policy. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Investment is going to be a catalyst that could coordinate mm -hmm. among those the various institutions uh, across the uh, all sectors, including the security sector, including mm -hmm. the economic, the service, all these sectors are going to be involved. And without their involvement, I believe that uh, nothing could happen in terms of the uh, implementation of this uh, policy. Mm -hmm. And also, let's talk about uh, what specific uh, incentives uh, are being offered to both local and international investor, investors under this policy. There are so many incentives, and incentives are actually associated uh, with the, the sectors. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are uh, tax holiday exemptions, mm -hmm. there are customs exemption, I mean, there are uh, incentives in terms of uh, exempting the equipments of certain uh, uh, sectors. All these incentives are included as part of, uh, of the policy. Mm -hmm. And they came with the uh, area of priority. Mm -hmm. For example, the agricultural equipment mm -hmm. has a priority as its own incentives. Mm -hmm. Also, the medical equipment, the life-saving mm -hmm. equipment, they have, all, they have own also uh, their uh, classification. So the classification of incentive come with the how we conceive the uh, project to be a priority line in this country. The policy talk about one stop shop yeah. as the instrument that is going to do investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good news is that we have a document that the concept of the establishment of the one stop shop. And this is the unit which can do actually the business. The business is uh, trusted with the uh, registration mm -hmm. and facilitation, and even the aftercare of the of the of the business. Mm -hmm. So uh, this unit is being now established. Mm -hmm. We are also amending, as you said, we are amending the uh, Investment Promotion Act, two thousand and nine said that uh, all these new things are accommodated when we enact that, that law. Yes. So uh, the one stop shop is being, is being established. Mm -hmm. We have seen in many countries the uh, doing business is, ma is made easier by sometimes registering a company mm -hmm. within a few hours. Mm -hmm in some countries. Mm -hmm. 
in our case now, it is really very difficult for the investors who are coming to South Sudan. And why is it difficult? Can it's difficult because more? the one-stop shop is not established. Mm -hmm. We need to bring the all institutions which are doing registration of the company, including business reg registration, mm -hmm. which is now in the Ministry of uh, Constitutional Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Mm -hmm. We need it to be part of the one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. We need the other uh, departments, taxation, customs, mm -hmm. all this trade, uh, they are supposed to be one-stop shop. So it's like that the investors are served within one route. Mm -hmm. And this is the aim of the establishment of one stop shop. Mm -hmm. The policy made it very clear and the act also made it very clear. Well, what are you going to tell to the investors? If you don't have investment map, mm -hmm. if you don't have uh, investment opportunities, mm -hmm. if you don't have investment policy, mm -hmm. if you don't have one stop shop, which is supposed to serve the investors, mm -hmm. what are you going to tell the, 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 the international investors? Mm -hmm. but now you I, the thought, policy, yes. I thought, we must have to concentrate mm -hmm. on the establishment of the department. Mm -hmm. And then now, after we, we make sure that the, uh, the department is established, mm -hmm. we have policy, we have uh, laws, we have one stop shop, the, the, the structures. Mm -hmm. Now, you can call the investors to come and tell them, that, look, this is what we have. Mm -hmm. This is the mapping that we have done. Mm -hmm. We have these opportunities in various states of South Sudan, mm -hmm. which we did it last year, mm -hmm. is a very huge document mm -hmm. containing the all projects which mm -hmm. are in the Republic of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. that, that is done. We have now uh, embarking in establishment of the one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. We are amending now the Investment Promotion Acts mm -hmm. to be attractive to the investors. And we have now the investment policy. Mm -hmm. I think we are ready now uh, to uh, uh, convince the investment, International Investment Conference. Mm -hmm. We are not doing investment ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, if we talk about infrastructure, are done mm -hmm. in the other uh, uh, ministries. Mm -hmm. For example, if we talk about roads, yes. it is the Ministry of Road Important to do them. Mm -hmm. But we, in the, ministry, in the Ministry of Investment, we have responsibility of attracting the investors. Mm -hmm. Tell them that, look, we have opportunity in this area. Mm -hmm. We have opportunity in the road sector. We have opportunity in the energy sector. We have mm -hmm. opportunity in the uh, transport. We have opportunity in agriculture. This is what we can do so that we bring them. Mm -hmm. But when they are in South Sudan, we hand them mm -hmm. immediately to those institutions so that they can be able to do mm -hmm. the business uh, with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we register them and also we can follow up. Mm -hmm their success, whether they are doing well or not. But the uh, departments which are uh, supposed to be doing business with the investors are these institutions mm -hmm. which I mentioned. We are a decentralized uh, system of the government mm -hmm. where there are, uh, there are labels, label of government, the national and the states and the local government. Mm -hmm. And if you look also in the schedules, of the functions of the business level, you will get that uh, there are some aspect of investment mm -hmm. are at the state level. Mm -hmm. And some of them are shared between the national government and the, uh, and the uh, state government. Uh, we are trying to coordinate because this is one of the important areas. Our constitution is very clear. Uh, we, in the Ministry of Investment, uh, we try to create a department, we call it State Affairs, in order to uh, coordinate with the state's government. We have a belief that the, the real investment is done at the state level. The states are the one uh, having lands, you know, uh, the states are the one having opportunities in the various sector. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, are, we are coordinating uh, with the states. For example, in the resident uh, uh, validation workshop mm -hmm. of the policy, mm -hmm. uh, the state minister, uh, ministers of finance and investment, mm -hmm. they took part of, uh, in it, and, uh, and their contribution was very positive toward the 
uh, formulation of the investment policy. Mm -hmm. So we are we we are coordinating with the states. Mm -hmm. There is no way at all that uh, we can relegate the state government. But we must have to coordinate, and we have a unit which is doing this. There are international investors. Yes. The one example is oil sector. Oil sector is being manipulated by the uh, foreign uh, investors. Yes. You know. And it is and it is it is moving. Uh, really, has a ministry. We are trying to shift to the uh, agriculture. We want to shift to the agriculture. We have seen many companies that are registering in this in this uh, department of investment are doing business which is classified as service. Mm -hmm. It is either general trade, you know, buying and selling, mm -hmm. which sometimes uh, its contribution to the national uh, GDP and the growth itself mm -hmm. is, 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 is not that much. Mm -hmm. We need the investment to come with a lot of opportunities, including the employment of our young people. Mm -hmm. I believe that the policy which is coming up now, it will realign the uh, priorities and it will shape the way how uh, the investment is going to be done in, in this country. Mm -hmm. As I told you, we put it as one of the pillars and we are going to concentrate in this, mm -hmm. in the policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are uh, trying to attract the, our people. Last year I was visited in this office by a South Sudanese diaspora, especially who are in the US uh, and Canada and Australia. Uh, they, create, uh, they came up as a, a joint venture and went to Kenya to do business of the real estate. Mm. And then they came to my office to invite me to go and inaugurate mm. that, uh, that business. Mm. Uh, because I was busy, because I was going to another trip, I sent the, uh, the undersecretary. He went and inaugurated uh, the business. It's uh, a real estate in, the, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's a huge business. Mm -hmm. And these are South Sudanese. In the said of our young people, going to other countries to go and invest. Why not they come to South Sudan? Mm -hmm. But we come to realize that they have some worries. They believe that the business environment mm -hmm. in South Sudan is not conducive. There are still a lot of challenges. There are still wars and all these things. There is no uh, stability. This is what is in their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now, when we were uh, formulating the policy. These are some of ideas that they were discussed critically. Mm -hmm. And then people try to come up with their answers. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, are, we are focusing on our people, our own people, uh, South Sudanese who are in diaspora, who have money. And uh, when we come later on in giving incentive, we will try to identify it because we pick them as a priority. Mm -hmm. We will identify what type of incentive that we must have to give to our diaspora and say that they come to South Sudan. The Ministry of Investment is being supported by the African Development Bank and the, UN, and the UNDP. These are the partners who are actually helping us throughout the time since I came to these institutions. Uh, all the success that I told you, they came from these two institutions. We have never received any fund from the Minister of Finance. We are thankful to uh, our partners, the UNDP and the African Development Bank. Uh, even the policy which we are now uh, uh, formulating, mm -hmm. uh, the support is from them. Uh, also, we are being supported by the uh, East African Community uh, Secretariat, especially the uh, uh, International Trade Center and the East African Secretariat, they are also uh, supporting us. For example, uh, uh, long ago we have formulated
the uh, public private partnership policy that one it was actually uh, uh, funded by the uh, uh, northern corridors you know so there is a regional col uh, collaboration because we are part of the re uh, of the regional uh, body is african community and whatever uh, uh, projects which c come from that body we get ourselves having a shares in it mm -hmm. that is the, the the first objective actually we uh, why we we need to uh, mobilize the investors is to benefit the local people mm -hmm. you know raise their living standard and then uh, create job to our people mm -hmm. uh, especially the young people this is uh, these are the reasons why we we need Mm -hmm. to mobilize the investors and then to come to South Sudan. Mm -hmm. I believe we are doing well uh, since I came here. Uh, the registration of the investment certificate is connected uh, with the uh, employment, mm -hmm. that is the work permit. Mm -hmm. We make sure that uh, the companies who are coming to South Sudan to invest, they are employing our young people at the 80 percent. This is the percentage mm -hmm. uh, uh, according to the labor law uh, and it is a condition for us to issue our certificate to the investors if you don't meet that target you don't employ 80 percent of south sudanese then we are not we are not issuing a certificate to you this is the condition and we realize that uh, these things we are happy <laughs>